Okay, you probably have heard the Beatles have a new song out now in 2023 called Now and Then. This is actually a song that's off a cassette that Yoko found in 1994 that had three songs on it. I think it was Free as a Bird, Real Love, and This. They released Free as a Bird back in 95 on the Anthology Volume 1 record, and we thought that was the last song. What we didn't know is they actually worked on this song then, when George Harrison was still alive. They did some overdubs on it, but they couldn't really separate the vocal and piano that John had played. You know, he's playing the piano and singing at the same time. And as you hear when I'm speaking, it's hard to hear my voice while the piano's going on. Recently, Peter Jackson told them that they had the tools to actually separate this voice from the background using AI or machine learning. So they went back in and they made a really cool short film that's about 12 minutes long that's on the Beatles channel that you should definitely check out on how they did it. But one of the things they did is they talked about removing the voice and they played the soloed voice, but they really didn't show how they did it. Well, there's a number of machine learning or AI tools out there to do it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually play the piano and sing that first verse and then show you how I remove the vocal of that stereo audio. Here it is. I know it's true. It's all because of you. And if I make it through, it's all because of you. Okay, I'm going to take that performance, I'm going to put it into this AI program called lalal.ai and separate that piano and vocal part into two tracks. Here it is. Okay, so I'm dragging the vocal and piano together in it. And what this does is it simply analyzes the two things. It uses machine learning to extract the separate parts. And then we have this. I know it's true. It's all because of you. Now listen to the piano here. I'm gonna play the solo of the piano. And this has the vocals over it. It's amazing. Let me switch back to the soloed vocal now. It's all my bad singing because and then the piano. That's pretty amazing that it can actually separate these things, right? Separate my vocal and piano perfectly. So that's what they did with John Lennon's voice and piano. They actually took out the piano. Paul replayed the piano, he says in the documentary, and then they used George's existing parts from 1995. Paul played a slide part reminiscent of something that George would have done, and Ringo played the drums to it. Let me talk about the melody first before I actually talk about what I think about the production. Okay, so the melody is classic John Lennon. Incredible melody writer, right? So you got A minor. Unusual note to go to. He's got E minor over G, back to A minor. I just love that. Then it goes back to A minor, to F major, then on E major. Love all those interval jumps and then a big jump down to E and then it goes to the ninth. up to the third of A minor. So it uses these haunting tones, surprise notes, whatever you want to call them that are so John Lennon, the interval jumps, things like that. Okay, so what do I think of it as a song? Giles Martin wrote a string arrangement reminiscent of his dad, George Martin, who produced pretty much all the Beatles records and did all those wonderful orchestral arrangements. I'm the Walrus, Day in the Life, all these 
these things. He was a genius at this. Eleanor Rigby of writing string parts, writing orchestral arrangements. And he put this orchestral part to this. One of my favorite parts of the song is this bridge section here. I'm going to play it. Hopefully it won't actually block the video, but... Very Lenny. And then oh, no. another minor chord. And then I want you to be there for me. Beautiful. To me. This is so Lennon-esque. G. And then he goes to B minor. That's not weird. Then he goes to E minor. Then to A minor. Lennon is one of the only people that will use three minor chords in a row like that. Now, this is all in the same key, but it's just a beautiful move. Then it's A minor to D. It's a 2-5, A minor, D. And then it goes back to the verse. This is my honest opinion of it. I love the fact that they did this. But to me, the piano... And the drums and the bass sound modern. It sounds like a John Lennon vocal from back then with kind of modern production values. When the piano first comes in, the first piano chord, it's very compressed sounding. And that compressed like a Beatles record, compressed like you'd hear a record today. And the drums are really big sounding and, and the bass, it sounds like it's from two different centuries. Maybe because it is, and there's just no way around it. And would John Lennon like this? Well, in the little documentary, Sean Lennon says that he thinks his dad would have embraced this because it uses new technology. And I agree with that. Beatles were all about inventing new technology. Automatic double tune, flangers, all these things. This all happened. The first feedback note before I feel fine. Beatles, they were unbelievable at using new technology. Do I wish it didn't come out and that I'd never heard it? No. I'm glad that it's out there and I really enjoyed it. But maybe sometimes things are better left undone. The Beatles were one of the few groups that stopped playing at the right time and never did a reunion. This obviously is not a Beatles reunion. There's only two Beatles that are living still. This is like time travel, right? You have a vocal from the 70s, from 74 or whatever. You have George Harrison's guitar parts from 1994. And then you have Paul and Ringo from 2023. So this entire track is time travel. I really love to know your thoughts. I tell people to subscribe. The more people that subscribe to my channel, the better interviews I can get. I'd love to interview the two remaining Beatles and get their opinion on it. Hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching.